More recently, some schools have implemented policies to remove Fs or Ds from the grading scale, or to allow no grades to dip below 50% to help out marginalized students. This makes a mockery of minority education. Restorative justice is the idea that discipline of racial minorities should be forgotten in order to make up for the supposed school-to-prison pipeline. Modern climate justice claims that the U.S. contributes largely to pollution, and other countries are poorly affected by it, so the U.S. needs to take in refugees as reparations. Brigham's and Women's Hospital in Boston is a teaching hospital that is initiating policies to give preferential care to racial minorities. BLM attacked the nuclear family and supported all manner of CRT movements. The founders, Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tometi, received most of the donation money for themselves. And lastly, like I foreshadowed earlier, the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture put out an infographic on whiteness a few years ago. This needs to be taken apart in detail so you understand exactly what is being attacked. In order, the aspects of whiteness are rugged individualism, meaning being individualistic, self-reliant, independent, or autonomous. Family structure, meaning the nuclear family. Emphasis on scientific method, meaning objective, rational thinking, and cause and effect relationships. History, meaning Northern European ancestry, the British Empire, and Western Judeo-Christian tradition. Protestant work ethic, meaning hard work, delayed gratification, and goal setting. Religion, meaning Christianity and monotheism. Status, power, and authority, meaning focusing on wealth, career, respect, and ownership of goods and property. Future orientation, meaning future planning, optimism, and progress. Time, meaning rigid time schedules and time being viewed as a commodity. Aesthetics, meaning European beauty, bland food, etc. Holidays, meaning Christian holidays and white male leaders being celebrated. Justice, meaning English common law, protection of property, and innocence before guilt. Competition, meaning focusing on winning, assertiveness, decision making, and majority rules. Communication, meaning the King's English, Western writing traditions, and politeness. They are pretty astonishing, and you might wonder where they came from until you see the citation that was later hidden. The one that directly cites Judith Katz and the challenge of diversity. Of the major leaders in these movements, who truly stands opposed to white culture, and who is actually complicit? Let's take a look. Judith Katz herself put in a lot of hard work to publish her books, so she's out. Pat Vidal must have followed rigid time schedules at some point in her career. Bye. Robin D'Angelo is white. Oops. On a side note, I think white fragility is really just about her. There's a term in religion called scrupulosity. It's characterized by pathological guilt or anxiety about morality. Essentially, it's the feeling that one is never good enough, or is never doing enough. It can be a form of OCD, and Robin may have it, but for critical race theory. Read her book and keep an eye out for projection. You will find it. Ibram X. Kendi certainly cares about wealth, which is part of whiteness. Oh well. Kimberly Crenshaw has no problem being a respected authority in the CRT movement. Sounds like a dissident to me. Gloria Ladston Billings must have been future-oriented when she planned the future of CRT. Bad Marxist. Patrice Cullors values authority as the head of BLM. Guess she's not black anymore. Angela Davis actually has white ancestors, so she has reparations to pay. Betty Friedan was certainly very individualistic in her feminist efforts. Out. Herbert Marcuse was a white man, so forget about it. Max Horkheimer and his theories used cause and effect relationships a lot. Bye bye. Antonio Gramsci not only recognized white culture, but wanted to work within it to beat it. Terrible. Karl Marx was very European. That's not good enough. George Hegel used rational thinking in his theories, even though he denounced rational thinking. White. You see, none of these people are good enough even by their own standards. What will happen in the future is what always happens. The tippy-top people in the movement will purge literally everyone else until they're the only ones left or they die, and then the movement will collapse, just like the USSR. The only question is, how many people will die before that happens?